Welcome to session three of our pre-marriage counseling. Today we're going to continue talking about the purpose of marriage. After today, we have we will have two more sessions on the purpose of marriage, and then we will move on to the practice of marriage. And the reason why we're spending so much time on the purpose of marriage is because without a firm foundation, without a clear understanding of why God created marriage, um, we will not be able to perform or practice uh, marriage. We will not uh, reap the full benefits that God has uh, placed within the marriage relationship. Now, I will go ahead and warn you that today's session is probably, uh, if I base it on facial expressions, the least um, liked of all of the pre-marriage counseling because it deals with a subject that gets right to our heart and it exposes our heart for what it really is. While at the same time, it also exposes how deep the Hollywood mentality and the misconceptions concerning marriage uh, really go in our culture today, even within the evangelical church. So marriage was not created, key word, primarily for man's happiness, but for his holiness. This is uh, the ultimate reason for marriage. God has given marriage to man and woman to help them to be transformed and conform more into the image of God, not primarily to make them happy. Now, we'll say this. Uh, individuals who pursue God's holiness are people who will be happy. Um, but people that pursue happiness primarily will never be truly happy because they are not pursuing what ultimately makes them happy, which is the restoration of of the image of God that has been marred by sin which entered the garden. We've already read passages in previous sessions where we see sin comes into the world, the effects of sin we feel now, death, disease, um, there's just so much heartache that, that constantly surrounds us that we're constantly reminded that we live in a broken and a fallen world. And uh, the image of God which we were created in has been marred and so God seeks to restore uh, his image in us, and he does that through, first, the act of our salvation, and which is we are being, which we are saved from sin's penalty, and then he continues that through the process called sanctification, where God is saving us from sin's power. He is uh, turning us more and more away from sin, turning us more and more into uh, his likeness, uh, which is what we would call holiness. Marriage is not about finding Mr. or Mrs. Right, but about becoming Mr. But about becoming the right person. Um, the person you're about to marry is not the person that got that that was created for you to marry. That that's not how. Marriage works. Marriage does not work by um, us uh, finding this mythical right person. It's just not. It's just not the case, and we need to steer away and move move away from that as much as possible. Um, you take the principles of marriage, and you take any man, any woman, put them together, and they can have a very significant and satisfying marriage. Um and, and be total strangers. Uh, the the show that's out where they're love at first sight, where they're taking two couples and they're bringing bringing them together in a relationship, uh, into a marriage relationship without having known each other. Those relationships genuinely can work if there is an understanding of the purpose and the principles and the practice of marriage. Um, and so, um, if you think you've discovered Mr. or Mrs. Wright, this person that you're Marrying is a person that you've always looked for. Um, it's just not the case. Uh, if they are the right person for you, um, then they are right, not because they were created for you, but they are right for you because they are practicing the, uh, they understand the purpose and the principles of marriage, and they are practicing um, those principles of marriage. Uh, so here's the question that you should be asking. Are you the person your future spouse deserves? 
Are you, not about are you finding the person you deserve, but are you becoming and are you the person that your spouse deserves? Are you becoming the person your future spouse deserves? That That is the penultimate question here. And hopefully what you'll understand is that you are becoming the spouse, you are becoming uh, the person that your spouse deserves. Um, you may not be, and you, trust me, you're not the person your spouse de- fully deserves at this point. But the better question is, are you becoming the person your spouse deserves? You see, God has designed marriage to expose all of your sin. Bet you never thought about it that way, have you? As a Christian, this exposure drives us towards, not away from Christ's likeness. As we are driven into Christ's likeness, we experience greater happiness. Jesus was the most joyous person who ever lived, while also being the holiest person who ever lived lived. Your spouse is an instrument that God uses to expose your sin so that you can experience transformation in yourself. Your spouse is an instrument that God uses to expose your sin so that you can experience transformation in yourself. Your spouse is not your enemy, but your emissary. She, he or she has been given to you by heaven so that you might be more fully, fully free from the sin which so easily entangles you. And this will enable you to live life to its fullest. Holiness is not a look, okay? Some of you may have been exposed to uh, holy rollers of the holiness movement, no makeup, hair worn up, skirts. Uh, it's a look. That's not, uh, that's not what holiness is. Holiness is not a look. It's a lifestyle. It's not about what you must refrain from loving, but what you are released to love. This is what holiness is. Holiness is not restrictive. Uh, it is it is releasing. It is releasing us to love and to love to the fullest. As we love our wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, we begin to understand in greater ways Christ's love for us. Let us not forget that Christ did not love us when we were lovable or at our best. That's important. You guys are going to have a lot of times where um, you're just not going to be happy with each other. You're not going to like each other. And yet, uh, we must remember that that love is not based on the other person's performance. Love is based on a commitment that we have made. We have committed to love each other no matter what. No matter what the circumstances uh, no matter what our uh, state of health might be, no matter what our financial affairs might be, uh, no matter what, we are committed to loving each other because we have committed to love each other, not love on basis of actions, just like Christ did. But God showed his love uh, for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So while we were at our worst, God gave his best. And let's remember that in our in our marriage relationship. When our spouse is at their worst, we don't need to condescend to their worst, but we need to give our best. We need to give our most. Uh, several years ago, I was in a post-marriage counseling and had a gentleman come in who was struggling in his marriage relationship. And he had made a, a rather lengthy lengthy list about all the aspects of his wife that he no longer liked, that he no longer loved. And um, as we went through the list individually, and as we completed it about three hours later, uh, the gentleman looked up at me and he said, so what you're telling me is that uh, all of these issues that I see in my wife and that I have with my wife, they are not my, they, they are not her issue, but they are my issue. And the answer to that was, yes, 
to a large degree, uh, these issues were her issues. And what God was doing is that God was using his wife to lay bare his soul, to lay his heart open before him and show him um, the degrees to which uh, sin and pride and selfishness still remained in his heart. And the gentleman got up from our session, uh, did not say anything to me. He got up, he left, he walked out of the room. Uh, several hours later, I received a call from his wife. She was in tears. Um, I thought I had uh, done uh, irreparable damage to the relationship. And she went on to tell me that he had come home, that there had been reconciliation in the relationship. And I'm glad to say today that uh, six six years later that this couple is doing well, they are thriving, they are as happy as they have ever been. But the reason why they're happy is because, number one, this, this husband learned that God had given him his wife um, to expose uh, the sinfulness in his heart. And when he began to use that to deal with his own wretched heart, then what happened is the the issues that he had with his wife began to fade away because they were not her issues, but they were his issues. However, something else that they both have learned is they have both learned that when there are issues, when the when the other spouse is not living up to their vows, they are not living in a way that is good for the marriage, is that we... Don't quit loving the spouse. We began to love them in spite of their uh, 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 of their actions. We begin. We really, in those moments, began to love them as Christ loved us, uh, and He loved us when we were at our worst. I learned. I love this quote from C.S. Lewis. He said that when I have learned to love God better than my earthly dearest. I shall love my earthly dearest better than I do now. And so when we focus in on holiness, when we focus in on loving the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we will love our neighbor, our spouse, our enemies as ourselves. We will love better. But I also want to turn that around and say this. As I learn to love my dearest as Christ loved me, I shall learn more of how Christ loved me. So know this, when I began to love my spouse, even in their unlovable moments, uh, just as Christ loved me, I will learn more of how Christ loves me. And so remember, our pursuit in marriage is marriage is an instrument. It's a tool that God has given us to spur us on to holiness. Um, and this holiness is a look is not a look. It's a lifestyle it's not about what we are refraining from uh, loving, but it is what we are released to loving. And if you keep focus on what you're released to love, then you won't give uh, uh, much uh, uh, further thought about what you are not being able to love. And so as we end this session, let's remember the the, the penultimate reason that God is given us marriage is he's given us marriage uh, to teach us what he is like and to make us more into he and to restore to us the image his image which we were created in which we have lost and when we are in pursuit of that when that becomes our aim and our goal then what will happen is we will experience the happiness in this life that God is get that God is intended for us to have um, in deep everlasting ways, and marriage is just one of those ways that God uh, restores in greater ways the image of God which has been lost.